Hello everyone, welcome back in my podcast. You know, the last podcast I always made some interview with a woman about issues with men, but I have to tell you, I really miss making podcasts by my own, by myself, just to say it in some calm kind of place in my home and just speak whatever is on my mind. So I want to go back to it, but I want to make um, more interesting podcasts since now on. And I just get amazing idea in my head. So when I get the idea, I thought, okay, I have to start right now. So I just get the idea and I'm making the podcast right now. Um, what I actually choose that I will speak about. I feel a pity that Egypt has a many amazing women, even now and even in the history, which actually are not mentioned especially for us foreign people or we simply do not know them and it's really such a pity because um, this woman can really inspire us and truly really give us a lot of life lesson I believe so I decided every time I will choose really some really interesting and amazing woman who achieved something important in the life and we can listen her story and learn from it. So I will jump directly to it because today I choose really very very amazing lady, amazing woman. Her name is Lotfia Elnadi. I'm sorry if I said it wrongly. I will try to say it as I think it sounds, but I'm not sure. So if it's wrong, so forgive me. I will write you her name even down in the comment <laughs> that is very clear who I mean <laughs> okay and why is she so important to me why I decided to start with her because she was actually the first Egyptian pilot women in whole Egypt and even the whole Africa as well even in the Arab world so it's pretty huge <laughs> So let's start with her story. She was actually born in Cairo in the year 1907, October 29th. If ever anyone is interested about Zodiac, so I told you uh, the whole date of her birth that uh, it can inspire you more. <laughs> Maybe you was born the same date, right? That's how I mentioned it all. Okay. So she actually... Uh, finished primary education and when she completed her father refused her to continue in, in her study because uh, her father actually had the idea that she would just get married and be a housewife so there was no need for her to continue her studies but what we have to also mention uh, that Actually, she was from a rich family, from the upper class of Egypt. So in that time, like her father was really, really rich. So it wasn't about the money, that, but he didn't see the need for a woman to study. It's kind of sad, right? But luckily she had an amazing mom who supported her. And she actually attended the American college and she was focusing on studying languages. And there she actually read uh, some article that a flying school is open in Cairo. And it truly really interested her. So firstly she went to discuss with her father and with her mother. Of course her father refused, as you can expect. Really hardly refused, but <laughs> she decided to disobey him, to, to don't listen to his word. And she somehow hired a journalist to help her with this case, to attend the school, but the journalist somehow refused to help her. So what she did, amazing move. She, I don't know if she was scared or not, but she was actually very brave because she went directly to the director of Egypt Air. Uh, his name was Kamel Elvi. And he actually saw the potential for publicity and he accepted her. For somehow she interested him and he decided to help her. 
But there was one more problem, and that she didn't have any money. She didn't know how to pay for the study. So, uh, the deal was that she will work as a secretary and uh, telephone operator for the school in exchange for the study. She actually attended lessons with the same So she was really the only woman there. And she earned pilot license 27 of September 1933. And she became first African as well as Arab woman pilot in the world. After only 67 days of study. Which is really quite a little if you think about it. Only 67 days. It's two months of study. And to become pilot, it was kind. If you think about it, it's kind of easy, right? Like nowadays, it's very, very hard. It's not like that at all, but she was the first, right? <laughs> okay, anyway, um, her father, of course, was very angry with her. But when he saw how successful she became, so he allowed her to take him on the flight uh, around over the pyramid. So I believe they had a happy moment together there. And since this day her father was sad, he became fine with it. And he was even proud on her very much. But what most important is that her achievement made headlines through the world. Really. It was like the world boom. <laughs> then in the December 19, uh, of the year 1933, she flew international race between Cairo and Alexandria, and guess what? She won the race. It was really big success, and she received a prize of 200 Egyptian pound. Well, 200 Egyptian pound nowadays is really nothing, but I believe in her time it was really a lot of money, and she also. I received congratulation from the king directly and also uh, um, there was a woman called Huda Sharawi she was a feminist leader and uh, this feminist leader actually held fundraising drive to buy her own plane she simply collected money to buy her plane which was something Really amazing. I cannot even Im uh, imagine it how she inspired a lot of other women even in her time. Okay, but then uh, she worked actually as a secretary, general secretary of Egyptian Aviation Club for five years. But unfortunately, after she got injured in accident and it damaged her spine. Then I told you already many times she inspired a lot, lot of other women and for another decade other women actually attended training and they became pilots as her. But unfortunately then was the second world war and it stopped everything and since this time they really stopped to train a women pilot for a really long time. Anyway. I after her flying accident, uh, she needed treatment, so she traveled to Switzerland and she remained there for many, many years. But in the year 1989, she was invited back to Egypt to participate in the 54th anniversary of the civil aviation country. And she received Order of Merit of Egypt Organization of Aerospace Education. It sounds so complicated, right? But simply <laughs> she received the reward. But what is even more interesting than in the year 1966, a documentary film called Take Off from the Sand was produced telling her story. I didn't see her documentary yet, but I definitely will. So, if you are interested about your story, watch it as well, and then you can discuss our experience, how did we like it and like it. 
but first I recommended to watch it and I swear I will watch it I already look forward to it so much and I'm so happy when I found out that there is some movie about this woman Anyway, at the end of her life, she moved to Toronto, to Canada, where she lived with her nephew. But um, actually, before she died, she went back to Egypt, to Cairo, and she died in Cairo in the year 2002. What's very interesting is the fact that she never married and she didn't have any kids. Which is a very interesting fact if you think about it that her father and to start plan for her she will be the housewife and she will have the kids and she actually never did and all her life she just meant her career even it was kind of short career as I told you it was just five years of flying and then she get injured unfortunately but um what can I say? I think that she didn't regret it. <laughs> I think she was very happy with what she achieved actually in her life. It was kind of a lot in her time and for a woman. And especially in Egypt as well. <laughs> so I personally have to say that she really inspired me a lot, this woman. Okay, because I am woman, I am in Egypt and I know how hard it is to achieve something here okay even because of the population it's too much people living in Egypt and each of them want to try achieve something so and even me if I am foreigner it's hard for me to achieve things which I want in Egypt so I really really admire her uh, I believe it's enough for today uh, so thank you so much for listening and I will love to read in your comment if you like this podcast, this type of podcast and or what we can maybe improve or what you want to listen more about who and like this. Give me some feedback, give me some idea and you know that I love your comments. All the time. So again, thank you so much and see you next time.